Hey guys, so Rudy did a really good job flaying this company. Now some other YouTubers also love this company a lot to the point that they've actually put, supposedly put money into the company on a video. Now I'm here to tell you why their marketing is absolute garbage. Um, so you can see PRNewsWire.com. That is a pay. So whenever I'm doing it for a client and the client is not famous enough, but they want to release a news article, which they write, by the way. So it's not like a, a person writes an article about you. You write the article, then you pay for the article to be published and promoted. But beyond that, let's talk about the tech crunch. Um, they, Mythic Markets, a young San Francisco-based fractional investing platform for fans, has raised $2 million in seed funding funding that led by Slow Ventures with participation from Third Kind Venture Capital. These are not very big investors um, and $2 million to them is probably not a big amount of money. But I do want to say that the marketing has been absolutely deceiving, right? Rudy made the comment that you had to be a millionaire or make you know $200,000 or some large amount of money to even be able to buy shares into this product. And therefore, if you weren't, there's some illegality, there's something illegal being done here. Now, I do want to focus on the CEO, Joseph McAlvany, who previously spent a couple years as an associate with the seed and early stage fund Social Leverage. I know what who Social Leverage is. Um, they're in the same marketing, and I was actually quite impressed. I thought he was a partner at Social Leverage, but he was just an associate, which means he's slightly better than an entry-level worker. And if in a couple years he didn't get anywhere, this is not a dude who is like top marketer, right? This isn't someone. This isn't isn't someone who. This is someone who looked at their company thought that it was really cool, and then did it to Magic the Gathering players. This is pretty ridiculous when I read that, that he's just an associate. It's almost like a law firm. If you work there long enough, you should become a partner. You should own equity, especially in something that is already based on early stage venture, seed venture, and it's already raising equity and things of this nature. This to me is pretty crazy. Um, yeah, Social Leverage has 450 followers on LinkedIn for their page. My page, again, we are really, really small. Oh, Mythic Markets is here too. Let's see how many followers Mythic Markets has. It has 40. And I think they're using a copyrighted picture. <laughs> so luckily they don't have enough. Last round, $2 million, slow venture. How many, um, oh, it goes to their thing. They have two to 10 employees, three of them on LinkedIn. That's interesting, privately held, founded 2017. So this company has existed for two and a half years and it hasn't gotten anywhere. And the reason that you should invest with him is because he was part of this other company which he wasn't even like, at first I was impressed. I thought he was like the inventor or the co-founder of Social Leverage. I was like, oh, okay, this makes sense. Maybe he knows what he's doing, but he's just a blanking associate making minimal wage. <laughs> it's terrible, guys. And so when, they, when I went on the website to look at, their, um, look at their stuff, I was just absolutely floored that the guy who made social leverage was part of this. I was like, this guy is like really smart. And then you read that he's a associate and they're leveraging, you know, the name brand so they can get the keywords and so on. But yeah, social leverage is a real deal. Um, it's exited 29 times. It's one of these things that essentially, I don't think anyone, it doesn't make any profit, but it keeps continuing to sell for more and more. It has one to 10 employees and every time, the last exit that it made was uh, February 10th, $1.3 million of seed round from CarPay. And then it raised $6 million November 8th, 2019 from um, Series A Apaca. 
and then Logi Board, October 20th. So this company has raised a lot of money uh, in random series, like just so many, they've exited 29 times. I think that's what this company, Mythic Markets, should is modeled after. But it's gonna fail. And the reason it's gonna fail is the premise of it is very stupid. So if you have a million dollars, why would you pop, want to buy a quote fractional share, which is not really a fractional share? Yes, I understand that. But for the purposes of their marketing, let's assume everything they say about their marketing is correct. If you're a millionaire, why would you do this? And if you are not a millionaire, you can't even do it legally. So it's just a marketing ploy to get dumb investors to give them more money and exit. This guy worked at the social leverage company, which has exited, it basically has a round of investment every other month, this social leverage company, and it's exited 29 times. So the CEO, Joseph McCovey, who previously spent a couple of years as an associate with the seed in early states, and that's probably how they knew, this guy knew about the other companies that gave him $2 million, which I think is gone now. No, it's not for Magic players. Let me make this clear. It is not for Magic players. The game that he's playing is totally different. He, he wants these investors to put in $2 million so they can sell it for $4 million to the next investor in the next series, B or C or A. And then they can sell it to the next investor for $8 million. They can sell it for the next investor for $16 million, exactly like WeWork. You can Google WeWork. WeWork was a company that was going to IPO a few months ago for $47 billion. Currently... I would value at zero, but it's never made a cent of profit. And its current valuation based on its biggest investor is 2.9 billion. So in the span of about 90 days, it lost $44 billion, quote, of value. That's the game these idiots are playing, but they're not very good at it, which makes sense. They're just associates. So these are like slightly above interns in my company. And they raised a bunch of money. Uh, they're probably out of money now, if I had to guess. You know, they raised money. They, they've been in operations in 2017. This is the first time people have heard of them. This was the interview. What's the best way to describe it? Mythic Markets is a stock market that allows investors to buy, sell, and trade fractional shares. That is a lie. Rudy called you out. But this is a legal so if I was a shareholder, like a certain person on YouTube, I would shoot a blank out of these efforts, right? I would shoot them to the ground because they're marketing, they're marketing and you, you have their ads. I you know, if you were just a regular dude, just screenshot it because we'll all laugh about it a little later because they're saying they are a stock market. There's no ends. It's kind of like when PicoTrade said that when they ask, how do you prevent, you know, inflation? Pico Trade said, oh, well, 100 Pico points will always be worth a dollar. Mm -hmm. There's actually video evidence of him telling an investor something that he knows is fa completely false. There was no way to stop hyperinflation. So we're building the secondary trading market that will allow investors to trade their shares with other investors. But according to Rudy, none of this is true. I mean, according to the SEC filing, I didn't read all of it, but I did watch the Rudy video and it pretty much just lambasted them. I don't think they can recover from that. I don't think there's any recovery. But then again, maybe what they're playing is they're not playing the, hey, let's get magic players to actually buy into this. Let's just give it a value and then we can sell it to the next bunch of dummies for even more money and we'll sell it to those dummies. So that's what Social Leverage did. Now, I don't know if Social Leverage is a company like Mythic Markets in terms of actual, you know, what they do. But they sold themselves 29 times. They've only been open since, I think, 2009. That's like three times a year, or like four times a year they raised money. So I think this is what the company did. The company raised $2 million from a bunch of dum-dums. And now it's going to try to take the $2 million and raise $4 million by showing, oh, you know, we finally, we proof of concept, right? So they raised the $2 million even before they had the proof of concept with the Black Lotus. Now that they have some type of proof of concept, especially if they can sell it again, the, or maybe Pokemon cards or comic books, if they can sell 
something that's not magic cards are in this case it was single cards versus magic boxes right they're trying to sell magic boxes as we know it's a very bad company i i don't think they're trying to scam magic players because magic players are smarter than that i think what they're trying to do they're trying to scam investors just like Pico trade was Pico trade that dude was like pitching all the time Pico trade remember wanted investment that's how they exit is not via selling a bunch of things, but they have to sell some of it to show, oh, look at the market. It's kind of like in Shark Tank when they say the market is $10 trillion, but I haven't made a single sale. They're selling the opportunity of it. Now, is this a good company? No. Do we need this company? No. Do we want investors to buy stuff at fractional in our game? No. Do we want a bunch of millionaires who don't play Magic, don't enjoy it, coming into our game to invest? No. That being said, this company is dunzo in my opinion. The Rudy video just finished it pretty pretty uh, clearly. This company is done. Bye, guys.